Okie dokie. Welcome to this week's quick quiz lesson. In this video, we'll be going over some of the big ideas in 1524's quiz 2 in 15 minutes or less. Let's get started. Functions. A function is a rule that relates inputs x and outputs y. For every input of x, there should only be one output y. But in the case that an input gives us two or more outputs, this relationship is not a function. Every input should only have one output. No matter the variables, remember that whatever's in the parentheses will be your input, and whatever's on the other side of the equal sign will be your output. So in the case of function f that has u as its inputs, we see a single input of six outputting these two y values, which means f is not a function. But when we consider the function g that has y as the inputs and u as the outputs, when we scan through the y values or the inputs, we see that there are no repeated y values. There is one output for every individual input. Therefore, g is a function. In the case that we need to consider whether a graph is a function or not, we will use the vertical line test. The vertical line test says if we draw a vertical line on our graph and it passes through two or more points on our graph, then that relationship is not a function. For example, in this problem, on graph A, we see scattered points, but we see two points that lie on the same vertical line. With graph B, we see scattered points, but two points lie on this vertical line. Therefore, neither one here is a function. In some problems, you might consider your x and y as your input and output, but in other problems, you might consider your inputs and outputs as cause and effect. For example, in this problem, they tell us the difficulty of exams influences the class's average grade. Therefore, the difficulty, since it's influencing the average grade, is the cause, and the effect is the average grade. And so if we consider this format, where we see the cause in the parentheses and the effect on the opposite side of the equation, we want to see that the cause is the input. Therefore, where do we see the difficulty as the input of any of these functions? And then where do we see the class's average grade as the output or the effect? Pay close attention to where they say influences versus influenced by, because what that'll do is change the order of the cause and effect. If they tell us the effort of the teacher is influenced by the effort of the student, it's now the case that the effort of the student is the cause and the effect is the effort of the teacher. Therefore, the student effort should be on the inside of the parentheses, while the teacher effort should be on the other side of the equation. Domain and range, domain and range. Domain is the set of x values and range is the set of y values. To be more specific, the domain is all the x values that you could plug into a function to actually get an output. And all the outputs that are actually created by the function is the range. For example, in this problem, where they're looking for a value or x value that's not in the domain, when we plug in negative 3, negative 8, and 2 to this function, they should all give us output values. They should all give us corresponding y values. However, when we plug in negative 7, we see that we get an error because plugging in negative 7 makes the denominator of this function equal to 0. And when we have anything divided by 0, that gives us an undefined value. And in problems like this, where they're asking for a value that's not in the range or a y value that's not in the range of the function, they want to know which y value is not touched by this function. So if we extend this function outward like this, we can see that the highest y value that's achieved is negative 3. So anything above negative 3 in terms of y values is not in the range of f. Therefore, any negative value as low as these are, are likely in the range. But of course, any positive value can't be less than negative 3. In this problem, they ask about the end behavior of y as x is approaching infinity. This is basically just asking, how is y changing or what is y approaching as x goes to infinity or gets larger and larger? So as x gets larger and larger, 50, 100, 152, 100, 250, and 500, we can see the y values changing to negative 4.99, close enough to negative 5. So really, you can look at the last y value in the row to tell where the function's headed as x goes to infinity. And in this case, y is approaching 0. And in this case, as x gets larger and larger and larger, the y values are approaching a much larger value. Therefore, they are headed to infinity. Linear, 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 linear. 
functions. So of course there's y equals mx plus b, or slope-intercept form. This can be useful if you have a slope and a y-intercept. And then there's this form, point-slope form. This can be useful if you're given an ordered pair or a point and a slope. So x1 will go here and the y1 will go here and the m will go here, as in this example. As we can see, the 1 is our x1 and the negative 2 is our y1. And they tell us that the slope is 8. So plugging this into the form would give us y minus negative 2 equals 8 times x minus 1. Sometimes you might have to rearrange this equation until it matches slope-intercept form. Quadratic functions, often known as parabolas, open up if you have a positive x squared term, and they might open down if you have a negative x squared term. For the most part, you'll see quadratic functions of this form, y equals ax squared plus bx plus c, where a, b, and c are just constants. So in other words, when I say positive x squared or negative x squared, I'm really referring to the a value being positive or negative. Whichever coefficient is in front of the x squared term determines whether it opens up or down. And whether the function opens up or down tells us whether we have a maximum or a minimum. When the function opens up, we can tell we have a minimum. And when the function opens down, we can tell we have a maximum. For example, in this problem, if we can see that the a value is negative 3, we know that this function will be opening down. Therefore, it should only have a maximum and not a minimum. Maximums and minimums will always occur at the vertex of the function. If we ever need to calculate the x value of the vertex, we can use this nice formula here. x equals negative b divided by 2a. Again, the b comes from here and the a comes from here. In this problem, we can tell that the function will be opening up and not opening down because in this case, the a value is positive one. And positive a values lead to parabolas that open up. In order to identify whether a or b is the answer, our focus is directed at the vertex. In a, the vertex occurs around 3.5, but in b, the vertex occurs around negative 3.5. So when we use our formula, x equals negative b divided by 2a, in this case, we find that the x value is negative seven divided by two, or negative 3.5. That tells us the vertex, or the minimum, occurs at negative 3.5 and not at positive 3.5. Exponent rules. The square root of x can be rewritten as x to the one half. The cube root of x can be rewritten as x to the one third. The nth root of x can be rewritten as x to the one over n. 1 over x is the same as 1 over x to the first power. If need be, we can rewrite this to eliminate the fraction as x to the negative 1. If we have something like 1 over x squared, we can rewrite that as x to the negative 2. This rule applies to all 1 over x to the n's. We can always rewrite it as x to the negative n. x to the a times x to the b equals x to the a plus b. x to the a divided by x to the b is equal to x to the a minus b. In the case that we have x to the a raised to the b, we will simply multiply the exponents together. Consider these rules when working out problems like this. Boom, bam, bop, bada bop, boom, pow. Oh! Exponential versus power, 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 power functions. An exponential function is anything of the form y equals a to the x, where a is a constant. For example, 2 to the x, 5 to the x, pi to the x, and a classic one, e to the x. The power function is anything of the form y equals x to the a, where a is a constant. For example, x squared, x to the fifth, x to the pi, or x to the e. Keep in mind, if you see a function that does not have x in it, it's neither a power nor an exponential function. Neither. Power, power. Neither, neither, power. Here's a variation of an exponential function that looks a little complex. Keep in mind, if you're ever given a function and you're trying to identify what the graph looks like, you can always plug in x values and see what the y values are, and then see whether the graph has those points or not. For example, if we plug in x equals zero, we will get two to the zero minus five. Anything to the zero power is one. Therefore, one minus five is negative four. When we plug in x equals zero and we get a y value of negative four, we should see the ordered pair zero, negative four on this graph. 
a tidbit about this one is anytime you plug in x equals zero to the function and you get a y value in return, that y value will be your y intercept. A cool idea about linear functions is that they will either increase or decrease at the same rate the entire time. In other words, in a problem like this, as you scan the table from left to right, you can ask yourself, are you adding or subtracting the same amount each time? 6 plus 4 is 10, 10 plus 4 is 14, 14 plus 4 is 18. Therefore, this h of x function is our linear function. Similarly, if you can find the function for which you're multiplying by the same amount each time from left to right, this will be your exponential function. 4 times 2 is 8, 8 times 2 is 16, 16 times 2 is 32. Therefore, f of x is our exponential function. In the case that you need to eliminate a natural log and get everything in exponential form, make e the base of both sides. Natural log and e will cancel. You'll be able to pull down what was inside the natural log. You might need to switch around the equation, but that's it. In the opposite case, that you need to eliminate the e and put everything in log form, take the natural log of both sides. Natural log and e will cancel. You'll be left with what was in the exponent, switch around the equation, and you're done. Log slash ln properties, log slash ln properties, log slash ln properties. Rule number one, when you have the sum of two different natural logs, they can be condensed into one natural log where the insides are multiplied together. Number two, in the case of subtraction between two different natural logs, you can condense them into one natural log with the division of the two inside expressions. If you have a coefficient outside of a natural log, you can bring up that coefficient as an exponent of the term that's inside the parentheses. This will be helpful in problems like this, Problems like this. If you happen to see something like this, this is known as a piecewise function. It's basically a bunch of different functions making up one single function. Like in this problem, each piece of the equation of the function represents each segment on the graph. The first one from x values less than and equal to 4, the second piece between 4 and 6, and then the last piece for x values greater than 6. If we see the first piece of the function with an inequality of less than or equal to, the equal to tells us we have a solid dot at the x value they're referring to. So x is less than or equal to 4 says that we'll have a solid dot at x equals 4 for that segment. Likewise, for the second segment, ranging from 4 to 6, we see that 4 has a less than sign, therefore it's open. But 6 has a less than or equal to sign, therefore it's a solid dot at 6 on the middle segment. And then for the last piece of 3 halves, we see that it's only for x values greater than 6. There's no equal to sign, so it's an open dot. If you enjoyed this video, go ahead and hit the like button. If you want to see more videos like this, go ahead and subscribe. If you want to connect with me or other students in the same course as you, join the Discord. That's all for this week's quick quiz lesson. I hope you learned something. See you next time. <laughs>